Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations and this week I'm going to show you how I built two frames, one with a hidden standing desk. Let me show you how I did it. Alright, you've seen it. Today we are going to make two frames and one is going to have a hidden standing desk inside of it. So when I'm making both of these frames, I'm going to do them at the same time because some parts are going to be exactly the same and when that is the case, I'm going to cut them at the same point and then there's going to be parts that are different from frame to frame. My first step is to cut the plywood, which is going to be the centerpiece for both of the frames to width and to length. I'm going to cut them to width on the table saw and to length on the miter saw. So that is going to be my first cut because then all of the frames and everything that goes around it will be taken off those centerpieces. So it makes sense to cut them first and they're exactly the same from frame one to frame two. So let's go ahead and get those cut. Before starting the build, I needed to work out how big the photo was going to be as the frame would be built around this size. I ended up using a company called Ink FX to print the photos and I selected a size of one metre by half a metre. This will also be a nice size for the standing desk and fit the wall space nicely. The photo panel which is coloured green in my model will be rebated into the frame so I needed to add 10mm to the size all the way around the photo panel. Once I had the photo panel cut I could work my measurements from these pieces. The next pieces to cut were the frame pieces. For the non-standing desk frame, I just simply cut plywood strips at 50mm wide. For the standing desk, I essentially needed to cut two frames. One frame at 30mm wide and one frame at 20mm wide. I will also mention here for the material I'm using 18mm birch plywood. I've got all my plywood pieces cut to rough dimension. Everything is cut to width, but nothing is cut to length at this point besides the center pieces. So my next step is going to be to cut in all of the detail that I need in some of these frame pieces. Some of these pieces need to have dados. Some of these pieces need to have rabbits. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all those details cut first, and then we can start to cut everything to length with 45 degree angles so we can start to bring the frames together. The first piece of detail that we want to work on is the front of the standing desk frame and for that I need to notch out on all of these four pieces to accept the main piece of plywood. I've got a piece of scrap here which is going to act as my thickness for the plywood so that I can make sure that I get an accurate measurement on the table saw. So I'm going to put this up the top here of my plywood to mark out my exact thickness. Now I want to make sure when I'm setting up my table saw blade that I am to the right side of the line to make sure that I'm not notching out my thickness of my plywood and then the blade thickness. So I want to make sure that I'm on that right side of the line. Move this over just a tad. We'll lock that into place. I've also lowered my table saw blade to 10 mil. Just needs to be about 10 mil. That's the thickness that I want it to go for the notch. So I think that'll work out perfectly. I'll run all four pieces through at once and then I can flip the piece up to actually notch out what I need. So let's go ahead and get these run through and then we can turn them the right way up and run them through again. I'm currently working on the standing desk and this is the yellow section of the frame as per the model. Once all the strips had one pass, I could bring the blade up and rebate out the plywood. I'm done with the detail on the first frame and I'm now going to work on the frame that goes above the standing desk. Now this is a little simpler because there's only one section to the frame, not two. Now on these pieces, I need to allow a space for the French cleat to go at the back. So I'm gonna move my table saw over for the thickness of the plywood. Again, my blade is down at around about that 10 mil mark. So we'll move the table saw across here and lock it in. It's nice, comfortable fit. I'm gonna run all the pieces through once and then I'll keep notching them over the table saw and running them through again until I have a thickness of my plywood which will accept the main part of the frame. Then I can cut French cleats which is how this is actually going to attach to the wall and then I can start to cut my 45 degree angles to frame around the frame and then we can get to the fun part which is working out how the standing desk is actually going to work. Before starting the framing, I cut the French cleats. French cleats are very easy to cut and they are a fantastic strong way to attach things like frames to walls. I started with a piece of plywood that was 100mm and I cut a 45 degree cut down the middle of the piece. I used two French cleats on each frame just to assist with the weight, in particular with the standing desk as the frame at the back is only 20mm deep. With the miter saw set to 45 degrees, I could get started on the frames. 
starting with one side and getting that cut I could then work my way around the photo panel. First up was the photo panel section for the standing desk, then I made my way to the back section of the standing desk and then lastly onto the top frame. With the pieces cut I could get onto glue up. I used blue tape to hold everything together and then could come back through with clamps. I kept each frame in clamps for a couple of hours and then could move on to the next glue up. The glue ups were mostly stress free with the dados and the rabbits making it easy as the photo panels helped keep everything square and together. Frames have been in clamps now for a couple of hours so I'm going to take these clamps off and then I'm going to glue on the French cleats before I call it a night and then tomorrow morning I can come back and sand everything up to 220 grit and I can also start to bring together the actual standing desk. I need to work out how I'm actually going to put this together. I have a piano hinge and I've got some chain which I've got an idea in my head but I just have to work out how I'm actually going to bring it together. So that'll be tomorrow morning's job but I'm going to get these French cleats glued in now and then I'll call it a night. The following morning, I started sanding everything up to 220 grit, but before turning my focus to install the piano hinge, I needed to reinforce the mitre joints. Using my spline jig on the table saw, I could cut in the splines. I lowered the table saw blade low enough not to cut right through the frame. My table saw blade is 3mm wide, so I would make one pass all the way around the frame and then flip it back to front and go around again, leaving me with a 6mm spline. The spline jig is very easy to knock up using scrap wood. I'll leave a link in the description below to the video I followed to make my jig. I cut the splines using scrap plywood. I really like the contrast with the plywood and having the plywood layers showing through in the splines. Once the glue had set for a couple of hours, I could come back with the flush trim saw and cut all the splines flush. To reinforce the French cleats, I drilled in some 9mm dowel. This joint is the weak point of the design, so the dowel should go a long way to making it stronger. I made sure the dowels were in the same spots from frame to frame just so everything matches. I'm up to the point where we are now going to install the hinge and off camera I have done some tests because I wasn't 100% confident in installing the piano hinge. The issue that I had is if you just install it flush straight to the plywood, what you're going to end up with is when things close, there'll be a gap at the bottom here and that's not what we want. So what I have gone ahead and done is worked out how deep I need to route the groove, which is just deeper than the piano hinge thickness and then I can route that all the way along both pieces and then when I install the hinge I'll get a really nice gap closing up at the bottom there which is what we're after. So I've gone ahead and got my straight edge already clamped, I know where my lines need to be so I'm going to route these in and then we can attach this piano hinge and then turn this actually into a standing desk. I cut a thin piece of plywood to the size of the piano hinge to help mark out what material needed to be removed. Using my palm router and a straight edge, I could slowly make my way along. When it comes to installing the piano hinge, I used a self-centering drill bit to help me drill centre in the holes. Now if I can offer any advice, let this be it. When installing a piano hinge and you have French cleats involved, make sure you route the piano hinge on the right side of the frame. Let's just say I did not and I had to remake the back frame. I finally got the hinge installed and it is working but there's a couple of things I'm not happy about. I think because of how thin I've cut this plywood there is quite a bit of flex and it's it's not a lot but I think I can try and fix it. What I'm going to do is cut a strip of plywood that fits between the edge here and the French cleat and I'm hoping that will bring it into square. It's literally like a mill or two but I think I'm going to try and fix it and it will also help flex this back out to be meet the edge of the frame. So let's go and cut some plywood and see if we can get this square. 
I somehow lost the footage of me cutting the plywood, but you can see here as I apply a finish, the piece glued in at the top. This fixed the problem and I was no longer having flex or alignment issues. I applied a couple of coats of clear to the frames, including where the photos will be resined in, as this will seal the plywood. To stop the resin leaking out from the frame, I used clear silicon and went around the frame. I laid a bead of silicon down and then came back through with a silicon tool to wipe away the excess. The photos had arrived and we could get to resining them in. I used spray adhesive on both the plywood and the back of the photo to secure the photos in place. I let the adhesive dry for a minute or two before gluing the photos into the frames. I went with resin for the photos as I like how the resin helps the colours in the photo pop and I prefer it to Perspex. The resin I am using is from Just Resin. I find it really clear and a great product. I mix the resin as per the instructions, stirring for about five minutes. On the first frame, we poured the resin in two puddles and then using a paddle pop stick to push the resin around. This worked, however, I liked the method that we used on the second frame much better and it made the resin even quicker. Once the resin was fairly level, I could use a blowtorch to remove any air bubbles. However, I needed to be really careful. If I stay in one spot for too long and the resin heats up, it causes the photo to bubble and I didn't want to get to this part of the project and have it ruined by the photo bubbling. On the second frame, we poured the resin in a snake on the top and bottom and then used our hands to move the resin around. This worked perfectly. Again, coming back through with the blowtorch to remove any air bubbles. The working time for the resin is about 40 minutes, so we babysat the photos for about an hour to make sure that the bubbles that popped up were removed and that the resin wasn't pooling anywhere it wasn't meant to. This resulted in two very clear and almost no bubble photos. The frames were then moved inside to cure fully for seven days. It has been seven days and the resin is all cured and we're now up to the part that's probably the most challenging for me and that is working out how I'm actually going to get the standing desk to stay locked when it's up against the wall. And I've ordered a couple of parts in because I didn't really know which direction I was gonna go in. So one of the ones was to use a clasp like so. But the problem that I've got with this is I'd have to route it in too far and then I haven't got enough holding power for the screws. So I don't think this is going to work. Yes, I could connect it to the inside here, but we need to worry about the chain and that's where that needs to go. So I don't think this option is going to work. So we're going to go with the less favorable option, but it will still do the job. And that is a clamp or a clasp at the top and we'll do two on either side at the top of the desk so we can lock it in. It's not ideal because we didn't really want it to be able to be seen, but it is what it is. I think that's going to be our best options and solve our problems so we can get these installed, get them working, and then we can worry about the chain. Again, I'm not 100% sure how the chain's going to work. I am problem solving as we go along here. So I'm going to go ahead and get these installed and then we can start to think about the chain. This was the most challenging part of the build for me, but it was a good feeling to work through the pain points and come out at the end of the day with a working project that I was really happy with. I installed the clips and I just had to make sure I didn't drill too deep or use screws that were too long. Let's see if this works. Oh yeah. Oh, that's not budging. All right, and then you'd undo these clasps. Same at the other end. Yeah, happy with that. All right, let's work on the chain. Now, as we work our way through this project, we're troubleshooting as we go. And our original plan was to use chain to hold the desk up at this point at a 90 degree angle when we're actually using the desk and attach it down to here. However, this poses a couple of issues. When you close the desk, it has to close on itself and then this French clean at the bottom starts to get in the way. So I don't think the chain is the best idea. So we have been to Bunnings and we have gotten this polyester webbing, which is super strong and I think is going to do the trick. Our thought process is that we're going to screw the polyester here at the top and we'll find out where it needs to go on here. It's the best spot and screw it in. And then when we close everything up, it overlaps twice. It still stays very thin and tucks away nicely. So I think this is going to be our best solution, but let's give it a go and try. If this does work out, then we can get this all screwed in and then we can work on getting it attached to the wall. The polyester webbing works really well. My only tip would be to push the screws through the webbing first and then screw it into place. This meant that the webbing material wouldn't pull. 
I also used black pan head screws to ensure the screws had good holding power against the webbing. Once the webbing was installed, I cut off the excess and used a lighter to melt the ends to stop them from fraying. When it came to installing the frames on the wall, we made sure the standing desk frame would sit at the bottom of our elbows so that it would be ergonomic and comfortable when in use. To attach the French cleats to the walls, I used wall mates where I wasn't on a stud and a 75mm screw wherever I had a stud. It's a good feeling to put the standing desk on the wall for the first time and see everything come together. With the standing desk frame installed, we could move to the top frame, which was just rinse and repeat. With putting the top frame in place, it was time to call this project complete. This project was filled with ups and downs and a ton of learning, but I am very happy with how it turned out. And now we have another great working place in the home, as well as some nice photography on the wall. I hope you have liked this project, and if you have, help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons, and I'll see you on the next one.